Your Excellency Victoria Newland, Under Secretary of State for Political Affairs in the U.S. Department of State, I welcome you very cordially to our country and to our ministry. Uh, we've had a very rewarding and complete discussion at the uh, cooperation dialogue on a whole range of matters of fundamental importance both to the United States and to Sri Lanka. We have Excellency 66 missions abroad and we have told all of them in no uncertain terms that their principal focus this year should be on economic diplomacy. That is what our country needs at this time. There is non-debt inflows of foreign exchange, mm -hmm. by which we mean principally trade, investment, and tourism. So we have uh, given our missions very clear directions about what they are focus, their emphasis, and their priorities should be. In that overall context, it is natural that in our discussions, we should have uh, paid considerable attention to the economic dimension of the relationship between our two great countries. So we explored avenues that are available uh, for more vigorous investment by American companies into Sri Lanka, ways of developing the contours of our trade relations. And although the number of tourists visiting us from the United States is, as now, is at present quite modest, I think there are opportunities for expanding that as well. Sri Lanka and the United States have a lot in common, one of which is a sanctity we attach to the democratic way of life. Actually, Your Excellency, long before our country received independence from the British, we had given our people the benefit of universal adult suffrage. Mm -hmm. That happened in 1931, while we received independence only in 1948. So since 1931, uninterrupted without a single break, our people have voted regularly at elections. They have elected and dismissed governments at free and fair elections. And the democratic way of life is something we cherish in our country. The other is the vigorous role of the private sector. Some of our principal companies uh, are the source of products that are very popular in the United States, in places like uh, Victoria's Secret. And these companies, especially in tea and in the apparel sector, are global leaders, not just national or regional leaders. So we have this robust relationship, not just between the government of Sri Lanka and the government of the United States, but between entrepreneurs in our two countries. After all, Thomas Jefferson and John Quincy Adams said that uh, freedom is indivisible. You cannot enjoy political freedom, but not economic freedom. It is all one, integral, a whole. So I think the empirical experience of Sri Lanka over the decades uh, vindicates the validity of that proposition, and this lays the foundation for a very strong bilateral relationship between our two countries. We consider other things as well, cooperation with regard to ocean-related matters. Sri Lanka is uh, playing a pioneering, pioneering role in that area as um, chairman of BIMSTEC. Next week we are handing over to Thailand. That is a grouping of seven countries, uh, all of which are very important from the point of view of the regime of the oceans. Uh, Sri Lanka and the United States share certain 
seminal, certain core values with regard to the law governing the oceans. We believe in a rules-based uh, order, in the uh, sanctity of uh, navigation through international waters. We also talked about uh, reconciliation in the aftermath of a ferocious 30-year conflict which came to an end only in May 2009. I briefed His Excellency Victoria Newland about the initiatives that we have put in place uh, to deliver on these issues, local mechanisms, the amendment of the Prevention of Terrorism Act yesterday in Parliament, the Commission of Inquiry headed by Justice Nawaz, which was appointed by the President and which has now handed in a very insightful and imaginative report, uh, the initiative by His Excellency the President of Sri Lanka to meet a delegation of the Tamil National Alliance on Friday, the overall exercise in constitutional reform, which is now nearing its completion, uh, as far as the submission of the proposals of the Experts Committee is concerned, the Experts Committee will submit their proposals, and then we embark upon the parliamentary process. All of these are exciting developments. The resolve of the government of Sri Lanka to work constructively and purposefully with the representatives of civil society. The NGO Secretariat has now been brought under the aegis of the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs. Uh, referring for a moment to the Commission of Inquiry report, one of the concepts that we want to develop uh, is the truth-seeking mechanism. Truth-seeking mechanism. Here, we do not wish to reinvent the wheel. There's no purpose in doing that. But uh, no, situ no two situations are exactly alike. So we will look at the experience of other countries, uh, South Africa in particular. But uh, always uh, taking care to adapt the successful experience of other countries to suit the combination of circumstances in our own country. And the assistance of the United States of America is most welcome in this endeavor, which I would regard as a matter of priority in the context of circumstances in our own country today. So we are very happy indeed that Her Excellency Ambassador Victoria Newland is uh, visiting us. Uh, it is her first visit to our country, although she has uh, a remoter connection. Her father was here some years ago. But um, we hope that uh, uh, during this all too brief visit, she has been initiated into some aspects of Sri Lankan life. And this will enthuse and embolden her to contemplate a more relaxed and a longer visit to savor for herself the warmth and the hospitality of our people, the vibrancy of our culture, our scenic beauty. All this is there for her, and I would urge Her Excellency uh, to take back to Washington pleasant memories of her interactions with us, and uh, we look forward in the not too distant future to welcoming her, welcoming her again to our shores. Thank you very much. I now would invite Her Excellency to share a few remarks with the press. Thank you, Foreign Minister. Today, you are right. It's all too short a visit. I ask you to tell my boss that next time I get to stay longer and we get to visit your beautiful beaches as well. We are very, very pleased to be able to renew our annual partnership dialogue in person after the long gap imposed by COVID. Of course, our partnership with Sri Lanka has been strong for 70 plus years, including through the difficult COVID period where we were pleased to be a supplier of vaccines and equipment. Um, but we come at a particularly difficult and pivotal moment for Sri Lanka. And you are a vital partner of the United States at a key crossroads in the Indo-Pacific, and we are eager to support you at this critical moment. We share 
a commitment to a free and open Indo-Pacific, and the, as the foreign minister said, to a rules-based democratic international order. And today we had a very rich and varied conversation, as the foreign minister said, about our shared aspirations for the strongest, most democratic, most prosperous, most just Sri Lanka in partnership with the United States. In that context, we commend the first steps taken in recent weeks and days towards national healing here, towards human rights, towards justice, particularly the amendments passed yesterday to the Prevention of Terror Act and the release of some prisoners. There is more to do, as you know better than anyone, um, and we look forward to working with you as you continue that vital work. As the Foreign Minister said, the President's decision to meet on Friday with the Tomo National Alliance is a very important step and one that we welcome. Uh, the notion of setting up a truth-seeking mechanism, as other countries with difficult histories uh, have done, particularly taking advantage of the South African experience, um, is a very good step and we look forward to supporting that process. We also underscored the importance of uh, the non-governmental sector, journalists, civil society, ending surveillance, ending det detention, ending harassment. I'm will be pleased to meet with representatives of civil society later today and to hear that the foreign minister is also going to meet with those representatives and hear some of their concerns. We're also encouraging provincial council elections and a broadening of the democratic space. But overall, I want to particularly commend the foreign minister and his partnership with the justice minister in moving forward on all of these issues of national healing and justice. As you take those steps, it will open even more space for our partnership, particularly in the security arena, which is already strong in the maritime domain and the aviation domain. As you know, we have two U.S. cutters, uh, which have been, um, which are now in service in the Sri Lankan uh, Navy, and we have another one on the way, which is being outfitted now, and your, your sailors and sea people, uh, seamen will sail it here in coming weeks. And as the foreign minister said, our economic relationship is absolutely vital. It is already strong throughout the COVID period. Our trade actually grew, which is quite stunning particularly because Sri Lanka was able to take its strong base in apparel and contribute to the global need for protective equipment, um, and we commend you for that. Uh, what's absolutely crucial, though, is the courageous step by the government to reach out to the International Monetary Fund for help now with your debt overhang, with your fiscal and monetary needs, and as you roll up your sleeves and do the hard work to strengthen and heal the economy here, the United States will be your partner and we will strengthen the capacity in our embassy to work with you at this uh, vital moment. To grow our uh, economic and trade base. We do well in the apparel sector, as you've said. We want to do more in IT. We want to do more in green energy. Uh, our uh, um, development finance corporation is working with medium and small business, especially women-owned businesses, uh, to give them more opportunity. And of course, we are strong partners on the environment, uh, and we are very proud to be Sri Lanka's partner in protecting our oceans and commend your leadership there, particularly as we look at the mangrove plant as one of the greatest soakers of carbon dioxide it's, and to see what we, more we can do there and, and on the plastics front. So overall, 
a very important set of consultations at a vital moment for you, but it's also a vital moment for the planet. And we will speak over lunch about some of the global issues, but I want to particularly make note of the fact that the Russia's brutal aggression in Ukraine uh, just underscores for all of us the importance of the democracies strengthening ourselves and standing together in the face of brutal autocratic behavior, coercion, aggression, whether it's coming from Russia, whether it's coming from other autocracies around the world. And I think the foreign minister said it best. Uh, we share a commitment to the rules-based international order. We share a commitment, the U.S. and Sri Lanka, to the sanctity of the democratic way of life. That's what we are here to strengthen together. We look forward not only to coming back to Sri Lanka, but also to welcoming you in Washington in coming months. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed.